My center is dedicated to using technology in a variety of ways to impact women's health and women's lives, particularly cancers that are unjustifiably prevalent in uh, many parts of the world. It started with the idea that if we can develop low-cost technologies for health disparities, we could really close the gap in the inequities that women in low-resource communities face. And so I've thought more and more about how we can develop technologies and at the same time empower women to really be agents of change. The first generation technology for cervical cancer prevention, which is called the pocket colposcope, was just FDA cleared. And that technology has now been deployed in eight countries. Our goal is to use the pocket colposcope to empower women to complete care. At the same time, we hope that that process not only improves the timeliness of care, but it also helps them sort of spread that knowledge in their communities. So in bringing a technology in, we're not simply saying, this is about preventing cervical cancer, which it is. It's about empowering people to help eliminate cervical cancer. And ideally, it's women helping women eliminate cervical cancer. So we're actually using uh, visual counseling, using the images from the pocket colposcope to educate women as part of a health literacy initiative. But what we're finding is when women use that technology, they start to write stories, they start to reflect, they start talking about how that part of their body is enigmatic and they've never seen it before except for the gaze of the clinician and how they don't even know their own inner parts. It's using visual cues to be able to talk about uncomfortable subjects. One of my students is from Ghana, and she had this vision when she came to my lab saying, you know, women in my country don't have access to this and that. I'd love to go back and do it. I had tasked her with working on what I would say is a pretty disruptive innovation. She got a grant and she's in Ghana, actually implementing the very technology she developed in Ghana, in the city that she's from. And I ask myself, how can we let women have access to the educational resources and mentoring that she had? Imagine what women can do for their communities. That is far more sustainable than anything I could do myself.